بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of God لعل هذا الكرسي ليس لي في Maybe this chair is not mine in this session It should be with Dr. Majd Al-Ansari But uh, his uh, contribution was uh, postponed And I'm occupying this chair I hope that you will uh, accept the agree of my presence of me taking power. Anyway, this is the fifth session uh, in this second day, and it will be about the social impact of the blockade on Qatari identity, no. on Gulf identity, the blockade of Qatar, on, and we will have uh, speakers, Munir Armehi, her subject is social impact of the blockade. Uh, and uh, Maryam Al Kawari, she will talk about the use of Shela poetry in the Gulf crisis and its impact uh, on the Qatari national character or personality. And uh, Mr. Muhammad Al Hashimi will talk about the shared Gulf identity and the crisis impact and repercussions. And uh, usually in uh, meetings, that uh, the uh, will talk for 10 minutes then he will be the main speaker but uh, my way is that I will not talk into this I will just give the floor to the speakers for 15 minutes each and we hope that uh, this will uh, add to our knowledge. So, I will start with uh, uh, Professor Munira Rumehi and uh, her uh, profile is in this booklet, so you can uh, contact it. In the name of God. And prayer on his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I salute you with Islam uh, salutation. Today I have a subject, uh, it's not a paper, it's a research about the social impact uh, of the uh, uh, Qatar uh, blockade on the uh, Gulf identity, the GCC was established to impose or to promote more cooperation in many, in various fields, cultural, media, defense. If we look at uh, the uh, GCC countries, I heard that there is no Gulf uh, identity. What does uh, identity mean? It is belonging. We, we belong to the Gulf. We have all these elements, language, uh, religion, uh, tribes, and we are uh, all over the Gulf countries. You can be in Qatar and your uncle is in Kuwait or Oman or so there are uh, uh, links, strong links, strong bond between us. So the GCC was uh, established in order to uh, solve uh, conflicts and problems for uh, security and protection. But unfortunately, on the 5th of uh, uh, June 2017, we were surprised uh, uh, by a blockade of uh, brotherly countries, and the reasons are known, and they have their roots. But uh, this uh, blockade uh, uh, by land, uh, uh, by sea, and uh, by air, 
and uh, these countries also forced their nationals to leave Qatar, uh, to leave their uh, work, their jobs, and their even families. The blockade has social and uh, psychological uh, impacts, very obvious, especially for the movement. So to go to Saudi for uh, a small pilgrimage or Umrah, we have to an authorization and this will take one or two months and it has to be a very close parent. And we cannot travel directly because our uh, company, air company, is not allowed there. So we have to go through Kuwait and Oman. I cannot uh, take long. Uh, the uh, objectives of the research is to know the uh, repercussions of the blockade on the structure of the Qatari and the Gulf uh, family and uh, the questions uh, is the ref on uh, the uh, Qatari and how to go to the uh, uh, religious uh, sanctuaries in Saudi what is the role of the uh, social uh, organizations into the relations with the Qataris and uh, uh, expatriates? Does the uh, Qatari national, uh, is he still interested in the Gulf uh, identity? The uh, methodological frame of the study, so it is about uh, the definitions of identity and there is a procedural. So this blockade crisis reflected in many aspects from the blockading country on Qatar economically, um, uh, media and uh, geographical, it impacts the uh, Gulf identity in all its aspects. I spoke about the uh, uh, route and it is known, uh, they are known, the method, uh, the methodical frame of the uh, study is based on the uh, historical reasons for that blockade and I went through many articles written by Qataris in the Qatari newspapers on the 6th of June uh, and uh, 2017 uh, uh, until uh, lately Rabi al Kawari who is a teacher, a professor in the Qatar University. Dr. Abdel Nasser al 26 articles. He is in the social uh, studies section. Mr. Salah al Kawari, the uh, chief editor of Al Shark. And these articles talked about the impact of the blockade on various uh, uh, sectors. I focused on uh, analyzing, analyzing these articles, so there were 23 articles, 15 for Dr. Rabi Al-Kawari, uh, 5 articles for Dr. Al-Yafi'i, and for uh, Mr. Kawari, six articles. I used the uh, quantitative uh, approach. And on, uh, I had a study, on a random study, on th 300 students in the Qatar University in various specialties and disciplines. And I used uh, uh, a questionnaire 
هي مستخ... استخدمتها من خلال المؤايشات اللي مستمع لها عرض بيانات المقالات الصحفيه والاستخراج uh, display of the uh, data تحليل النتائج المحور الاول الاجتماعي يرى the analysis the writers في داخل عرض النتائج يرى الكتاب الثلاثه ان الازمه الخليجيه في جوهرها اساسا ازمه اجتماعيه Gulf crisis is fundamentally a social لها مستويات crisis على الأفراد and أو the negative aspects and impact are on the families and individuals and uh, this impact does is not only on uh, Qataris but also on uh, the Gulf uh, citizens the uh, negative uh, impact uh, said that uh, the uh, blockading country mixed uh, between the uh, political uh, uh, conflicts with uh, the social conflicts. Uh, there was even uh, families, uh, mixed families which were affected or who were affected. For the expatriates, the Qatari who uh, were married to uh, a Qatari woman married to a uh, Saudi student, uh, the Saudi has to leave, had to leave because he was threatened by Saudi Arabia and she stayed with her children. I have this table from uh, a social center. So they are Gulf citizens. <laughs> And uh, Egyptians, the family wants to go, and uh, the husband uh, uh, doesn't want to go. Most of the people, as you see, and these uh, people consulted uh, the Wifaq Center. 1,023 individual, uh, another center, Aman Center, 245, etc. You can see it through this. So there were a lot, and there were also divorces. And there was also uh, divorces or abortion, if you can say, of uh, marrying projects. There was a research in the Qatar University. Which shows uh, professors in Qatar University, 70% of uh, nationals said that they couldn't see their uh, relatives f uh, from the blockading country for, uh, for, for nearly two years now. So there is 480 cases of separation between family numbers. And there was one Qatari woman who is married to Emirati. So she went with the uh, uh, child who had the Emirati uh, nationality. And so they took the... Uh, child in the from her in the airport and she had to leave back to Qatar and when the decision of uh, blockade the Qataris in Mecca faced a lot of problems the uh, uh, hotels didn't uh, want to accept us we couldn't change our money and we had to leave to Oman in the same day and others went to Kuwait. These are religious uh, duties. Uh, 
لهم اسمه خادم الحلم الحرمين الشريفين وليس the مالك the king مالك الحرمين الشريفين is the server of the servitor of uh, or the custodian of the two mosques not the owner of the two mosques we have uh, uh, conventions and agreements for defense and uh, protection so those who promise and then don't fulfill their promises they are the losers so I uh, analyzed all uh, the what those three searches uh, wrote so this shows the impact of uh, the uh, political conflicts on the social uh, life of people. And when we have a look on uh, writings in social science, even the social scientists, scholars, Durkheim, uh, spoke about the role of religion in uh, social uh, cohesion. And uh, while there should have been solidarity, so the theory of confrontation says that uh, religion might be used to justify the interests of uh, the rulers. So the national identity is made through social culture and it will stay as long as there were people who will be defending our national identity and the social culture is the guarantor of our unity. The three writers that uh, this identity is uh, reinforced by two celebrations of the national day and also or the uh, uh, popular uh, arda, which is a type of uh, traditional dance with the uh, swords. So there were uh, tribes who participated in this and the tribes uh, unified until our Qatari tribe There is also the uh, uh, photo of uh, Tamim al-Majd. I noticed that even in the celebrations at home, we have this uh, photo and they are signing on it. And this reflects the solidarity and loyalty between uh, the uh, people and uh, their leader. And uh, we also dealt very humanely and uh, reasonably with this crisis. And the Qatari doesn't need to uh, introduce himself to his uh, Qatari brother. He is a citizen and the other is a citizen. So the uh, they are united by this uh, citizenship. Uh, uh, from my point of view, this is the uh, uh, true uh, definition of uh, citizenship. There is also a link between the media and the identity because it reflected the unity and uh, it is uh, studying the uh, crisis uh, objectively. There is a point. Uh, so the uh, role of uh, media of it with all its uh, uh, aspects so it seems that uh, the function is uh, political and it is used by politicians 
according to its interests. This is what Habermas uh, said. He said that the media is a tool which uh, uh, shapes the public opinion. So instead of uh, uh, promoting the media to create or to shape an objective uh, role, it is used in uh, controlling the uh, freedom of people. So the three writers uh, say that there is a solution for this blockade if we talk to the wise people of the Gulf uh, citizen uh, and uh, insist on the fact that uh, the unity of uh, Gulf countries should not uh, uh, be threatened and we expect the Gulf countries to wake up from uh, uh, this situation and what happened uh, is serving uh, Western agendas with the objective of destro destroying the Gulf uh, uh, unity. Microphone. Microphone. This is uh, uh, Half of the interviewees said they agree. And uh, uh, these say that they don't intend to give up their uh, Gulf identity because they have uh, strong bonds with uh, the other Gulf citizens. For the uh, opponents, they, they lost uh, uh, confidence in the Gulf countries. You didn't let me finish. <laughs> so to see that uh, the, pre the president is uh, democratic while the population is uh, being despotic to, to the president. The second speaker is uh, Maryam al kawari She talks about the use of Sheila poetry in the Gulf crisis and its impact on the Qatari national character. I would like to thank the center for uh, hosting this event. I will talk about uh, songs and shilas. I will talk also about the songs that were the Gulf countries. The crisis also one extended uh, to the uh, cultural field, songs. Uh, there are uh, stars of the uh, Gulf songs who started attacking and criticizing Qatar. So this is not just a conflict between politi uh, politicians. It is also uh, uh, 
confrontation uh, between artists and uh, cultural personalities and their thoughts and their uh, uh, beliefs. Uh, art is not to be ignored, like poetry, music, and uh, chants. It played a very important role in politics. Uh, an example, we learned it in primary school when uh, the Professor went from Mecca to Medina. Uh, the uh, supporters uh, welcomed him by uh, a song and this expressed the happiness uh, of uh, those supporters. It is also an announcement of uh, the um, uh, establishment of a new uh, entity in uh, this region. So they expressed themselves through uh, music and uh, poetry. But the Gulf crisis is not uh, an independence uh, war, uh, but uh, we have found in it a lot of expressions through music and uh, poetry. So my uh, research explains that and its relationship uh, with the, the understanding of this crisis and also the impact of uh, those various uh, artistic uh, uh, events on the Qatari personality and characteristics and how does it influence the national identity. I divided the speech into three uh, sectors, music and uh, its relation with the identity, and I will uh, try to define the identity, then the identity and the music in uh, the technological revolution, and examples of uh, songs and shelas in uh, the Gulf crisis. In the relation of uh, music of, uh, of the identity, either it is a political or social identity, and also the feelings and sentiments. Biskovic, uh, in her study about uh, cultures of peoples and nationality, uh, it reflects uh, the uh, national identity but this relationship uh, uh, doesn't only concern the groups uh, nationalist but also on the social groups like uh, women i would like to explain here that the impact doesn't come from the musical instrument it comes also from the content the lyrics the meaning of the words whether it is uh, 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 audio or video or uh, written. It depends also on the uh, historical uh, era, if it is important or not. And of course, uh, music and arts contributes in uh, creating uh, a uh, feeling that identity is not an imagination, but it is uh, a feeling between people even if they don't know each other. The problematic in identity is that it's not uh, fixed, but it is uh, evolving. And uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, experts is saying that the uh, uh, identity changes according to many factors and it is not uh, uh, limited by boundaries but it can go over and these boundaries. 
the strength of this tool is uh, was known by the political uh, uh, power it was used by uh, uh, the political uh, uh, regimes like the uh, Soviet Union used that they uh, talk about uh, war between uh, uh, identities and uh, how uh, music contributes to creating uh, uh, identity. Uh, Jamal Abdel Nasser in the Arab world used the uh, uh, national uh, patriotic songs to uh, promote uh, the morale of Arabs after the defeat of uh, 67, 1967. There is uh, also the uh, jihadi uh, movements uh, in Pakistan and others in Afghanistan. So when I talk about the technical revolution, we notice that the changes which appeared after the Arab Spring, uh, it is a revolution of change. We have noticed that there were many arts with, uh, uh, which appeared and which reflect the dignity of uh, uh, peoples. And uh, this helped also democratizing uh, music. So this process of democratization opened the door for all, for whoever wants to contribute and uh, like the war of uh, songs and shilas which uh, uh, appeared after the Gulf crisis. So I have examples of that and I wanted to explain what is the shila. Those who don't know what is the shila, it is a, a popular uh, poetry it is uh, 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 social heritage in Gulf and Qatar. So the poet uh, says the Sheila, uh, and there is also uh, 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 an air, a musical, with his voice. And we notice today that uh, the voices could not be, maybe are not beautiful, but they are encouraging and uh, uh, contribute uh, to the uh, enthusiasm of uh, listeners. So there were some examples w which had a reaction and which was followed by many. Allow me to read some or by some words are not very polite. Uh, listen to me. Its title is uh, uh, Listen to me. So the poet uh, had two objectives. It's to break uh, the uh, uh, traditions in a political uh, way of uh, uh, without uh, uh, Listen, Tamim bin Hamad, and uh, uh, he meant to uh, accuse him. And uh, Sheila uses the name of a tribe, and he thinks that uh, the government of Qatar uh, mistreated this sheikh, so he's calling the tribe in Qatar to uh, stand against this sheikh. And he pretends that uh, the Gulf countries don't recognize the frontiers, so he used the card of the tribe in order to divide, uh, to call for the division of uh, the state of Qatar. This is an example of uh, Sheila, another example uh, about a song. You might know it. 
which uh, the song uh, is uh, say to Qatar. He's a producer, uh, a musical uh, producer, uh, and uh, it was sung uh, by uh, famous songs uh, uh, in the Gulf. And it is obviously supported by government, but uh, the poet uh, uh, had insidious, he didn't differentiate between the state and the uh, uh, population and uh, described them or accused them of being traitor. This uh, uh, appears like uh, a last warning of the traitor. So there is a, a threat against Qatar and the style used by the poet, instead of saying, say to Qatar, so he says to uh, unknown uh, uh, elements, and he says, uh, say to the Qataris or to Qatar. He doesn't address directly Qatar and the Qataris, as if he's saying they don't deserve to be addressed directly. Other examples in Qatar, when this uh, song uh, came up, Fahd Likbisi uh, uh, replied by uh, neighbors, we will remain babers. This song was characterized by calm and uh, reason, reason. Another shayla is uh, you have the whole world and we have Tamim. So we will uh, uh, defend him and sacrifice ourselves with him and we will defend the dignity of the people and of the emir. I have to say two important points here, like the uh, adjectives, the uh, very positive uh, adjectives, and the renewal of our uh, loyalty to the emir, and uh, it refers also to the enemies of Qatar. I noticed that in most of the shilas in Qatar, <coughs> it is uh, uh, focusing on uh, uh, positive uh, uh, descriptions and uh, qualities and defending the Gulf, the Qatari and Gulf identities. And it says that uh, they surrounded it, uh, they surrounded it uh, uh, at dawn when we were sleeping. So he mentioned the facts and how the announcement of the blockade was done and uh, defending a national identity, Qatari identity. So when I uh, compare the uh, uh, songs in uh, the blockading country and the songs in Qatar, the difference is in the style. And what I would like to mention here is that the songs in Qatar played a ro the role of the revolutionary uh, songs to strengthen the national identity among Qataris. Maybe it was meant from the government through constraints. And uh, uh, with regard to the importance of uh, that music and the arts play in such crisis. So we can uh, wonder if it is a long-term identity or just during the crisis. Thank you.
Thank you very much, uh, Mariam, uh, for your presentation uh, yesterday. Uh, Maya had uh, an, uh, an interview with me. She's a PhD student, and I thought that she's a normal a common student, and today I find out that she's uh, a very high uh, uh, level. She can use a very uh, nice language, and uh, she's expert uh, in her subject. So I'd like uh, to congratulate her for that, actually. And uh, microphone, please. So the ladies, since yesterday, actually were dominating the stage. Uh, well, it's uh, more than 50%. Uh, and uh, I give now the floor to Mr. Muhammad Hashim Al Hashmi, who's going to talk about uh, the common uh, golf uh, identity and the uh, blockade against Qatar. You have 15 minutes. Uh, very good morning uh, to everyone. I'd like to thank you for uh, allowing me to speak before this uh, privileged uh, panel. Uh, the paper I uh, presented is about the identity of uh, or the unit united uh, identity uh, uh, of the Gulf uh, region and, uh, of course, uh, the uh, scientific uh, committee of uh, the center is uh, specialized. Uh, therefore, today I'm going to talk about uh, the a crisis uh, of the unified uh, Gulf uh, identity. Since the 90s of the last uh, centuries, there were questions uh, related uh, to the uh, identity or unified uh, identity in the region because there was no clear vision for this uh, integrational uh, project. Uh, and these uh, questions uh, were justified, and there was also a result uh, of uh, the uh, disappointment uh, feeling of uh, GCC citizens uh, with regard uh, to the uh, current uh, situation. You know, it's also applied also or applies uh, to the elite. And uh, since the beginning of uh, the blockade of Qatar, these uh, questions uh, uh, faded away, uh, and uh, everyone started thinking that uh, this uh, identity is uh, going to disappear, especially with regard uh, to the high level of division and differences, uh, discrepancies and disparities. Uh, but God forbid uh, there was no uh, military operation. I'm going to tell you something, actually, which uh, uh, happened uh, a week ago uh, before the symposium. So I was uh, having uh, dinner with a colleague of mine uh, who is an uh, engineer in Qatar Pretoria. So he's engineer. So while having dinner, he told me, he said, what are you going to present uh, during the conference? So I told him uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the identity. So he started he, so he start, He stopped uh, eating, he said, oh, identity? I, he said, I don't see that there is uh, an identity. This is an identity without the vision, without anything. So this is uh, a reflection of uh, uh, the way uh, people in the Gulf think about uh, the uh, identity. But uh, we cannot blame uh, only some countries uh, for their behavior and say that they are trying to dominate the uh, Gulf uh, decision. And uh, we may some uh, experts are blaming uh, the uh, Arab uh, Spring, uh, but the clinical death uh, of uh, the GCC Council uh, is uh, uh, synonymous uh, for the absence uh, of uh, capabilities and competences needed uh, for these uh, integration projects. Uh, and today's uh, talk, I'm going to mention uh, uh, two aspects, and I'll leave uh, the third aspect uh, for uh, your uh, questions, uh, and it's uh, rather uh, analysis. So we're going to talk about uh, the GCC uh, Council and the circumstances of its uh, creation. The second aspect, I'm going to talk about uh, the Gulf identity. Was it uh, a mean or a tool or an objective uh, and the last uh, aspect uh, i'm gonna talk about uh, 
the unified identity in the divided Gulf, uh, whether it's economical, uh, social or political. So these are the three uh, aspects. Uh, So the paper addresses uh, the problem of the uh, Gulf uh, identity and uh, will also define the reasons uh, for the uh, failure of this uh, project. Uh, and after that, we'll talk about uh, the uh, crisis uh, in the Gulf uh, countries, in the Gulf uh, region, which uh, went uh, beyond all expectations. And although there are a lot of discussions, uh, at all levels uh, among that uh, those he discussions conducted here this uh, uh, privilege platform of course is uh, very much concerned with regard to the uh, GCC identity but uh, this uh, paper my paper my mother's paper uh, claims that we cannot really address uh, this uh, issue separately from the uh, surrounding circumstances and environment actually the project, uh, the, the, the birth of the GCC Council itself was uh, a truthful and tr trustworthy project. Uh, but there were a lot of deviations uh, on the path and uh, on the way. Uh, and uh, this uh, paper also uh, tries uh, to shed a light uh, on the uh, uh, Gulf uh, crisis uh, from the economic uh, point of view. And I think uh, that the uh, political disagreement uh, and the difference uh, reflects actually also the social uh, disagreement uh, and disintegration within the Gulf uh, texture and uh, structure so this is uh, actually my analysis uh, the political situation goes hand in hand with the uh, economic and the social uh, situation when we go back uh, to the establishment of the GCC council so it was uh, actually a process of uh, formation since uh, UK uh, stated uh, its intention uh, to leave uh, the coastal line in uh, 1968 and the UK called uh, on the Shuyu, uh, the tribal leaders uh, in the region to, uh, to unify under a specific uh, umbrella, not because the UK loves the region, but uh, uh, to prevent uh, any uh, challenges and problems in the future. So I think uh, it was uh, a formation process uh, for the GCC uh, Council. We need to say also something uh, related to GCC countries. Uh, the countries here were not uh, independent uh, and uh, there were a lot of uh, differences uh, and disagreement between the leaders uh, after the independence uh, between 71 and 81. Uh, internationally speaking, uh, the GCC countries did not enjoy any international uh, protection, uh, especially with uh, the growing uh, aspirations of uh, regional powers such as uh, Iran and uh, Iraq. Uh, and also, uh, GCC countries uh, couldn't uh, count uh, on the support of uh, large Arab uh, countries such as uh, Egypt uh, yeah, because of the uh, E egoism of uh, those uh, countries, uh, especially when we talk about uh, the uh, um, Nasserism uh, movement. Uh, those uh, larger countries uh, were looking at uh, GCC countries uh, as an obstacle on the way of the Arab uh, project. Uh, and uh, also there is an ongoing uh, concern within the GCC mechanism uh, from uh, towards uh, case A, uh, looking at it as a uh, power which wants to uh, dominate uh, everything. And afterwards, uh, from uh, 1981 uh, with the uh, Iranian uh, Iraqi war, 91 also the occupation of Kuwait in uh, 2001, uh, what uh, they called the uh, war against uh, terror 2011 the arab spring so every 10 years every decade uh, there was an event uh, since uh, 1981 till 2011 so the notion of the uh, gcc or the gulf uh, identity 
emerged uh, in the 70s, uh, and this notion was based uh, on the common language, uh, religion, uh, history. So the uh, GCC Council was created uh, to facilitate uh, and coordinate uh, the work of GCC countries of the uh, member states uh, to foster economic, uh, social, and uh, political cooperation between the countries, the constituting countries of uh, the GCC platform. To pla this uh, uh, council uh, got the needed uh, support, uh, but there are some elements we need to take into consideration. Uh, for example, the uh, Islamic, uh, uh, the revolution in the Islamic uh, Republic of uh, Iran, and also the war uh, between uh, Iran and Iraq, and uh, also we need to separate uh, between the uh, revolution itself uh, as a geostrategical uh, event. Uh, and uh, also exporting uh, the revolution and the feeling of uh, hostility to the neighboring countries. And this is uh, a behavior rather than being an event, uh, as it is a process. Uh, apart from that, you can also mention uh, the revolutionary uh, system or regime in Iraq, uh, which is opposed to uh, uh, royal system. How many minutes I still have? Oh. So we need to define the uh, Gulf uh, identity. There are different uh, uh, definitions uh, you mentioned uh, earlier, but I think uh, Abdul Hamid Al Ansari, the Qatari academist, uh, uh, provided maybe a global uh, definition. Uh, and uh, this uh, says uh, that uh, the identity is the result uh, of historical uh, accumulatives uh, uh, during uh, history. It's a uh, reflection of uh, common uh, uh, aspects uh, such as uh, language, history, and so on. The uh, Gulf uh, identity has always been based uh, to common cultural uh, aspects, uh, and it has never been related uh, to a future project. When we talk about international relations, uh, we all understand uh, the importance of uh, GCC Council, and the uh, objective uh, was uh, to um, position uh, this uh, new player as uh, a regional uh, power uh, in uh, on the map. So I'm going to skip uh, this part uh, so we can uh, uh, finish uh, on time. Uh, you spoke about uh, different uh, aspects uh, such as uh, the language, religion, uh, history, and so on. All these elements were important uh, for uh, uh, the foundation of uh, GCC Council, uh, and I can remember one uh, of uh, the books uh, that uh, Maryam mentioned, uh, actually. This book uh, was translated by the Arab uh, Center, and the book uh, in uh, and Benedict, Benedict Anderson uh, in his book uh, uh, talks about the influential institutions uh, in uh, the GCC uh, uh, example, I'm gonna, or I have uh, seven aspects. Uh, first, uh, the weakness of the political contribution. That's why uh, the project of identity is uh, superficial. Uh, second, uh, the rental economy and uh, how this uh, affects the relationship between uh, the state and the citizen. Three absence of uh, the uh, educational uh, institutions uh, and among the important uh, points uh, there was a mistake at the level of apply applying uh, or implementation so we created the GCC uh, uh, council but we did not create the uh, necessary institutions to implement uh, the policies of uh, uh, this uh, council. In Europe, uh, the development uh, was uh, different. Uh, all countries uh, put uh, their differences and disagreements aside and they focus on uh, building institutions, uh, building common markets. Uh, in the GCC uh, 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 countries, uh, we try to do things in a different way. So this is actually uh, uh, the objective. Uh, to conclude, uh, I want to say 
so many of you know who is Abu Atahia. He went to Harun al Rashid uh, one day, and uh, Abu Atahia is a great uh, poet. Uh, but later, later on, he was put uh, in jail. So uh, he said that uh, we. We really need uh, a clear vision. Uh, so there was a uh, uh, poetry of uh, Abu Atahiyah with the meaning that uh, we need a vision. You cannot, uh, you know, build uh, a ship. Uh, you cannot build a ship uh, and uh, you have no water, you have no sea, no rivers, and you want it to move uh, on the desert. Uh, so this is uh, very important. You have uh, to do uh, something which is. Uh, applicable which is implementable and uh, which is aligned with the environment with the surrounding uh, so for me gcc uh, council uh, is uh, actually over and uh, we should uh, compare between the withdrawal of uh, the uk from uh, the eu and uh, what the brexit uh, needs uh, in terms of legislation and uh, all that uh, so you can compare that uh, with uh, the uh, withdrawal of uh, any uh, GCC country from GCC uh, Council. So it's uh, very easy in the GCC uh, uh, mechanism or system to withdraw from uh, this uh, uh, union. You just withdraw your uh, delegate and that's it. Uh, so I have a lot of things to say, but you can read the paper. Enjoy. Thank you. I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Al Hashimi. We've been talking yesterday and today about identity, and uh, we didn't mention uh, some of the references uh, which uh, contributed tremendously in shaping the notion of identity in the Arab world. Uh, among them, uh, m I mean, uh, Ma'luf, uh, but I can add that uh, Dr. Muhammad Darmihi, who just uh, left us, uh, and Dr. Khaldun al the late Khaldun al al Azm, Mirabshara. And Sata al Husari, Abdul Hamid al Ansari from Qatar. So these are the academists. Uh, uh, it's very important uh, to mention uh, these names of. Now, we open the floor for questions. So we have exactly 30 minutes. Uh, so we take three questions or comments from here, uh, ladies and. Uh, and gentlemen, and the same uh, from this side. So please introduce yourself before you pose your question. Abdurrahim Asiri from Kuwait University. In fact, I'm very happy to participate uh, in this symposium, but at the same time, I was uh, a bit uh, angry this uh, session. Uh, uh, portrays uh, field uh, studies and like uh, to congratulate all the speakers uh, if you <laughs> if if she does not achieve a PhD at least give her honorary uh, PhD so it's really uh, sad uh, to see what's going on uh, in the GCC area and every you know we have been teaching in our uh, universities that uh, Arab uh, unity will originate uh, from the GCC area but my message uh, to my friends and colleagues uh, in Qatar the people understand the situation it's not a real a uh, uh, political situation or challenge the political challenge uh, uh, can you know be solved uh, the biggest uh, problem is uh, this crisis has become now a social problem For example, when you arrive uh, to the uh, 
uh, airport uh, in Doha, you know, there is a queue special for all GCC countries, uh, and this is uh, something you see in Qatar, but when you go to other GCC countries, uh, they accept only two nationalities to queue and to stand in the same queue. So I think this pain resulted uh, or uh, linked to the crisis will uh, remain for a long time. Amman. I have a, a remark uh, on what uh, Mariam uh, said. Uh, she's uh, Monira, sorry, Monira. She's a researcher and uh, she didn't uh, mention any of the articles of Ahmed Ali Al Abdullah. I hope that you uh, have a look uh, into that. Uh, uh, your you spoke about the shift uh, of the battle from the political uh, level to the uh, popular or population level. Uh, you spoke about the importance uh, or the use uh, of uh, artworks uh, on the battlefield. What if you could have talked about uh, the dimensions uh, or the future dimensions uh, that we need to stress uh, and uh, emphasize uh, and uh, that's it uh, from my side a question for the three speakers very nice uh, and a general presentations uh, i have a basic question actually is there at all a gulf identity what we see now, it's not uh, a deeply rooted identity. Is Do we need actually a Gulf uh, identity? So the identity is something imaginary to fulfill a need. Uh, what I noticed yesterday, we very much uh, link uh, the Gulf uh, identity with the GCC Council and the collapse of uh, this institution, does it mean or will it mean the collapse of uh, the Gulf uh, identity? Can we um, shape uh, a Gulf uh, identity outside uh, the uh, uh, mechanism of the GCC Council? Thank you so much. I'd like to thank the chair and the moderator of this session. I'd like to thank also the speakers. My question goes back uh, to another aspect. What's the priority when it comes uh, to shaping the Gulf identity? Is the priority the institutions or dialogue or the uh, social and cultural uh, space, uh, which is a mobile one? Uh, in many papers uh, addressed uh, the issue of uh, institutions, uh, other uh, papers uh, addressed uh, the importance of uh, literature and uh, poetry. And also you spoke about the impact uh, of uh, the blockade. Uh, this uh, blockade itself is related to a big uh, uh, problem. One of the uh, players uh, in behind this crisis is outside the the Gulf, which is uh, Egypt. So what brought uh, Egypt to uh, uh, Gulf calculations? Uh, and uh, my question, has there ever been a Gulf identity? So on which platforms uh, do uh, Gulf citizens uh, talk to themselves? Uh, are there any uh, free media platforms, for example? Nowadays, uh, anyone who uh, expresses his opinion through Twitter, he's uh, uh, arrested. Uh, so my question, is there any uh, joint uh, uh, GCC space? Mohamed uh, from Oman is my name. Uh, my, the previous uh, speaker uh, addressed uh, some of the aspects I wanted uh, to ask. So I think under this blockade, uh, the uh, Gulf uh, identity is a uh, suffering uh, question. Is there at all 
IG, uh, Gulf uh, identity? If yes, uh, how concrete uh, is this identity and what is common between us, uh, among us uh, Khaliji people? What makes us uh, Khalijis? Uh, what makes us uh, uh, different uh, culturally speaking or historically uh, speaking? Uh, uh, keeping away from the uh, political cliches, uh, keeping away from the uh, media discourse, what's the reality of things? Uh, the language, we all speak uh, Arabic uh, from uh, uh, the ocean uh, to the Gulf. Uh, the cloth, the clothing, uh, the traditions in Oman, we have different clothing, for example. In Oman, uh, we have a uh, common uh, uh, history with uh, non-Arab uh, areas such as uh, uh, Algeria, Libya, Tunisia, India, Africa. We have uh, we have a uh, common uh, and long history with Yemen. So let us uh, throw this uh, to discussion. Is there really a Gulf uh, identity? Do we really need uh, a Gulf uh, identity? And then what about uh, the national identities? A country such as uh, Oman can be compared uh, to uh, South uh, Africa. Oman is a very colorful nation, multicultural, multiracial. We have uh, different uh, uh, languages uh, in Oman. We have different uh, races in Oman. The Romani citizen who has uh, uh, an East African origin, is he Arabic or no? We have also Romanis uh, with uh, Indian or Persian origin. Are the Arabs or Romanians? So this is uh, what I wanted to mention. So we need uh, to think uh, deeply about this term. My question goes to Mariam. I disagree when you speak about the uh, shalat, uh, just with regard to the taste, of course. <laughs> you m spoke about uh, the uh, change uh, related uh, to political economic situation. If we want to analyze the shalat, uh, of course I listen to some, but uh, you know, they're uh, m talking about uh, protecting uh, the uh, own country, the own nation, there is uh, a feeling of uh, hostility and uh, there is a kind of militarization of our society. So how can we compare all these non-human pictures uh, with the fact uh, that we need uh, to safeguard and uh, protect uh, our nation and uh, our unity? Ulal Kahlote, PhD student uh, in Coventry University. Thank you very much uh, for uh, your uh, presentations. My question, after the uh, discussion of uh, the identity and uh, especially with regard to the uh, Khaliji or Gulf identity as uh, Mrs. Uh, Munira said uh, the uh, Gulf or GCC identity reflects belonging to this uh, society, but uh, don't you think that the uh, clan and sectarian, uh, clan and uh, tribal system is uh, a tool that might help us uh, to reach uh, reconciliation away from uh, any uh, foreign uh, policy, so the most important is to unify tribes, clans, uh, families. Uh, according to my knowledge of uh, Gulf uh, countries, uh, you might have uh, a Qatari citizen, but his uh, cousin is a Saudi citizen or a Saudi citizen. This uh, family unity, don't you think that tribes and clans uh, might play a role uh, to overcome uh, the crisis. Dr. Mariam, you mentioned also the shailat or the uh, songs. 
Don't you think uh, that these uh, shailat are misused? Uh, normally, this uh, shailat uh, used to uh, go division, and don't you think that we can use it uh, for the opposite uh, objective, uh, actually, to strengthen and bolster? Uh, unity in the region. Last question goes to Dr. Muhammad. You mentioned the pre-exit. Uh, do you think uh, that there is a horizon to see Qatar leaving uh, the GCC uh, Council? Qatar, Qatar exit? And do you think uh, there will be a referendum from the people of Qatar? So according to the study presented by the doctor, uh, a few uh, small percentage uh, of the population is opposed uh, to the exit of Qatar from GCC countries. No, no, the majority refused to go out uh, from uh, the uh, Gulf uh, Unity. So this is uh, my question. Thank you. Aisha Dermakeen Oman, thank you very much. Since yesterday we've been talking about the social changes in the Gulf uh, uh, region and everyone is uh, focusing uh, on GCC countries and I think there's a difference uh, between uh, uh, GCC countries uh, and Gulf uh, countries. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Mrs. Mariam for her approach. Uh, and uh, thank you for your language. Uh, we were speaking about uh, music, uh, but uh, you mentioned uh, a lot about uh, shilat. Mr. Muhammad, you said uh, that uh, GCC Council failed uh, to establish a unified uh, identity for the uh, uh, countries. So actually, this is not uh, the objective uh, of the GCC countries. It's uh, objectives of focus uh, on the economic, uh, trade, uh, and uh, cultural part. So As uh, Dr. Yahya said, uh, do we really need a unified uh, identity in the Gulf, uh, in the GCC countries? Do we really need this kind of identity? Do we really need uh, a unified, uh, although it's uh, a, an intelligence, I think, uh, of uh, GCC countries not to put this uh, as uh, one of the its aspects, because every country has its own identity, and uh, I think there is uh, a multiculturalism in the area. Thank you very much. Uh, very enjoyable uh, uh, papers. Uh, Muhammad, uh, Hashimi, Maryam. Uh, I see that uh, you are experts uh, in your subject. Uh, but I think uh, that there is uh, a kind of uh, uh, hustle or haste to uh, uh, talk about uh, identity. Every person is looking uh, for his uh, own uh, identity and uh, they think that everyone is uh, sharing the same uh, feeling with him, uh, uh, looking uh, for the definition of uh, identity. But I think uh, we cannot study identity after crisis. Palestinians, uh, for example, and their experience, uh, 1948, uh, which is the biggest 
uh, crisis, but the crystallization of uh, the Palestinian identity took a long time until the creation establishment of uh, Fatah movement. Mariam, I think uh, your research, your paper, it's very interesting, but uh, maybe you spoke about the political mobilization, and uh, I think uh, that uh, your uh, uh, theoretical uh, starting points, uh, that Mr. Hashmi, are also very important, but this uh, also you're going maybe towards uh, some uh, comparative studies, uh, GCC uh, countries and uh, royal regimes, uh, uh, very much uh, different than uh, Republican regimes. Uh, Benedict, Benedict uh, Anderson uh, uh, spoke about the Arab uh, Republicans. So when you go uh, Republicans and you go to Egypt, do you find this a different uh, situation? When you want to talk about uh, uh, royal systems regimes, uh, the uh, government is not concerned about uh, political uh, mobilization. There is a difference uh, uh, the way the government is dealing with the people in uh, uh, kingdoms and in republics. We have to be careful about the frame we are talking about. Now we are talking about modernity and postmodernity. So the concepts, the frame of concepts is different. Modernity and the difference, difference with the post-modernity, this means that there are structures and there are frames where these have been built. Therefore, identity when the GCC was uh, established, it was in the preamble of uh, the GCC. And it was a question of introducing Iraq and Iran. And between GCC, it was proposed or suggested to get Iran and Iraq. As for the uh, uh, art, I would have liked it to be a deeper analysis about the relation between song and the shila, especially the citizens know the difference before the blockade and after the blockade, there is a new identity is, uh, is formed and uh, is uh, still on. I would like to thank the counter-revolution. The uh, Arab Spring was came to uh, improve or promote the personality and uh, the contribution came, but the uh, blockade made the counter-revolution adapt, adapt or adopt, and the peoples were used to work against the uh, Arab uh, Spring, although after the blockade uh, these populations were used and it made the Gulf uh, peoples uh, change their uh, vision towards the participation of peoples. Peace be upon you. Mariam Luhibi from Oman. My question is to Mariam. Uh, I liked your subject for the uh, identity. And my question is about the uh, research tool used in the study. Three minutes for each. And I start with uh, uh, Maryam. 
Thank you for these questions and uh, comments, which will be an ad addition to my research. My answers uh, will uh, uh, be in line with some of the qu uh, answers I had or questions I, I was wondering. For the Sheila, its uh, influence was on the youth and adolescents. Because if somebody asked me what did they use Sheila instead of other, it is because it is faster and easier and uh, uh, stronger than other forms of the art because it is uh, used by uh, musical instruments. I have a uh, younger brother. He was uh, driving normally. Then we changed into a shela in a problem called in a program called Al Galail. And then his uh, driving changed, and he was driving fast. And uh, I asked him what happened. He said, "I felt that when I heard the shela, uh, 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 it brought me back to the." Uh, past uh, as if I was uh, on a camel or something, but uh, this uh, Sheila made him feel so. So it has an influence and impact, and scientifically, it uh, uh, augments the adrenaline uh, 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 in the individual. For the uh, futuristic or future dimensions, we used to have a song which is I am a, a Gulf citizen. Our Gulf is one. Uh, and also in the war against Yemen. Uh, we have seen uh, new shilas and songs. Calling for the uh, 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 Gulf unity against the enemy in Yemen. There are many songs which talked about uh, unity and the uh, strength and force. There is also the shilas for the National Day. And the shilas. There is a very important question to go to the lyrics of the shilats. Initially, it was used for many objectives, for marriage. Or it was also said to the uh, sheikhs of uh, tribes, praising them or during wars. And Shilat was sometimes the origin of uh, wars, but it has the tribal uh, uh, aspect, and the tribes praising themselves against others. Mrs. Ola, you talked about uh, 
leaving the GCC, uh, leaving the world. Do we have, uh, uh, what do we have? There is nothing common. The only thing is the Dar uh, al-Jazeera or uh, al-Jazeera shield, the peninsula shield. For the Gulf uh, identity, it was an artificial one, and it was done for political, and it, uh, uh, it neglected uh, the uh, social dimension. So this, if this question is asked to the decision maker in the Gulf, So he will talk about it from the a political dimension. Even economic, there is no complementarity economically. It was also uh, imposed from above, and it was not clear, and it was not practical. We have to uh, compare the uh, short time of uh, identity uh, building while these uh, identities didn't appear uh, before the formation of the national uh, identities. But for the uh, uh, Gulf countries, it, they were uh, new uh, states, new countries. So if you ask somebody today, most of uh, people, if you ask them what is the difference between the national identity and Gulf identity, you won't have a clear answer. Uh, I would like to contribute. As uh, the professor said, that he is Omani from uh, West Africa and Omani from Pakistan and from uh, Persian. The Arabic is the one who spoke Arabic and who believed into its future and who uh, uh, adopted uh, the uh, common. Uh, it's not important where he comes from. Uh, there is a question, are there uh, Gulf identity and what is their uh, link with the GCC? They are linked to GCC was established to solve uh, uh, problems and promote cooperation, but the identity uh, existed before that through the tribes, through the social traditions and uh, religion and also the uh, social uh, tissue. As for GCC, it is the leaders who established it, but unfortunately, we didn't have this complementarity. Uh, we didn't find any justification when the crisis has, uh, happened. We said that the content of in, in the uh, Gulf, that it's free because we didn't have any alliances in the uh, Gulf, but it was uh, hidden things and uh, the blockade of Qatar is the one uh, which went on the surface. Even the blockade is not between peoples. Uh, as peoples or populations, uh, Bahraini or Saudi, they are all uh, cooperating with us and are not happy of what happened. 
But uh, the GCC didn't succeed. Sheikh uh, uh, Tamim said in his uh, Asian tour that he's calling for uh, dialogue. And he said, in the Gulf crisis, we are all losers. And we thank uh, Professor Munira Maryam, Maryam and Al uh, Hashimi, and we meet next uh, uh, session. Thank you.